Folks, we are back with Michael Brown a week after we first visited with him. And boy, he's got a lot of work done here. It's a Thursday noon time. He usually works till about 2 o'clock because then it starts getting real hot. And he's, uh, boy, you've got a lot done out here. So, yeah. And you, I'm very happy with the progress. You are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with only work in the short days, I wasn't sure how it would go. And, uh, I guess I just uh, got lucky. I didn't make very many mistakes. And you're saying if everything goes well, you're hoping to have most of this done by tomorrow and then let it sit for a few days. Correct. I want it to harden up before I varnish it, and I could use a break from it. Okay, when you say harden up, what exactly does that mean? Well, uh, the paint cures. Okay. And it gets harder. And uh, it's just better to wait a day or two before you put the clear coat on. Gotcha. Uh, and what does, I assume the varnish is, is a protective measure. Watch behind you. I will watch behind me. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to be socially distanced here and still hear Michael. Please do. I got this really good varnish that uh, should help this thing to keep its color for 15 or 20 years. At wow. Last, at least that long. Now, do you put on one coat of varnish, two coats of varnish, or? Oh, uh, well, it's expensive stuff. Okay. So I look at the first coat and then I make a decision whether I've got to spend the money on another gallon at 130 bucks a gallon. I tend to, to try to give it one thick-ish coat without it clouding up. If you put it on too thick, it will cloud up. All right, and does that take some time to cure as well as the regular paint or? Yeah, it does, but it'll be hard to touch. Uh, I put that on, it, it ought to be hard to the touch in uh, an hour. I got gotcha. you. I got a question. It's been raining in the afternoons, just sporadic rains. Has that kind of messed with your schedule or? No, because um, I, I have to stop. Right. Because uh, it gets too hot. So uh, usually this uh, last couple weeks has been the usual pattern, afternoon and evening thunderstorms scattered around. Right. And. Uh, so I'm used to that. That's been North Carolina weather since I was a kid. Uh, what also helps is that uh, I've got radar in my pocket. Now, oh, okay. And I can look, you know, I can check what's coming and uh, make sure I don't have wet stuff on the wall when it gets here. Gotcha. When I was first starting to do this, you didn't have that kind of thing. And I learned to be like a farmer. I could, I'd look at the weather in the morning and then read the sky very carefully uh, all day. That was kind of fun because I'd have students from the university helping me. Right. And I'd look up and say, well, we got 45 minutes. And they say, oh, boss, you can't tell that. But I can tell that. Yes, you can because most of the weather comes from the Greensboro side. That's right. Actually, we used to go vo boating on Jordan Lake. used to listen to the radio stations out of Greensboro. Once they started reporting rain there, you'd know you'd have to get off the lake within about an hour's time. Yeah, and that's about the rate that generally storms move. Uh, you got about an hour from Greensboro, so what is that, like uh, 40 miles an hour or something like that? Right. Uh, as a general rule, I mean, weather's funny. I got a question for you. Uh, you had the conceptual drawing that the committee bought off on, they, they gave you all these ideas for all of this stuff. How has this actual painting on the wall, the mural, changed from that conceptual drawing? Have you had to make any changes or it's pretty much yeah. been the same? Uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, you know, they had some color sketches, they had some a more detailed black and white sketch. And uh, you know what I got, it, it was a sort of a rush to get the sketch ready for them in time right. for various reasons. Uh, so when I got here finally settling down to work, I had to move the objects around a little bit to dodge the drain pipes and the gas lines and the electric meters. So things got a little bigger, things got a little smaller, move a little to the left, a little to the right. Right. But that's about it. Uh, you know, pretty much, uh, you know. So as you as you can as you folks can see, what Mike is talking about is they have the conceptual drawings, but as you can see, they've got a couple meters out here with a whole bunch of piping and some wiring, and of course you got the drain pipe on this side. So Mike's taking that all into consideration while he's doing this. 
Well, yeah, it's, it's really hard to put uh, an animal or a face or what have you over a pipe. Right. It gets really badly distorted and it takes a lot of time. Move them over six inches and you're good to go. Why would I not? Gotcha. I got a question. This one on the tiger here, part of his mane goes across that water pipe. So when somebody's looking at that tiger, what's the best way to look at it? Straight on? Or? I'd say straight on. Yeah. Straight on. The, right. uh, the, the sides of the drain pipe are simply transitional. I run it straight across. Okay. So it, it'll line up properly uh, when it's viewed from straight ahead. Gotcha, and gotcha. Some, you know, I've cut the easy stuff. Pine cones easy, needles are easy, and potatoes easy, and they're all tucked in the corner where the complexity is. Gotcha. So sometime next week, uh, after this cures, Mike will be putting down the varnish. Uh, maybe I'll come out and be able to get a picture of that. Folks, this is a chance for you to see the artwork that Michael Brown's been doing out here. We have a video out there from last week, and... This is how much work he's done since last week. Oh, last question. On the colors and the, the paints, have you had to make adjustments as to your color schemes or your paints that you use since you, I mean, from what you originally conceptualized? Uh, I always do that. Okay. And it's almost like uh, just part of the job. Always, uh, I'm mixing colors right here on the site. I have a good collection of uh, yellows, greens, blues, browns, etc. cetera. Uh, a lot of it recycled from previous jobs. Uh, and I'll, if I have sky blue, I'm keeping it and I'm, I'm pouring it into a bucket, all my sky blues that I use over the month or two months. And then I always have some right. to, to save money and use uh, perfectly good blue sky. Oh, no gotcha. To, buy, uh, to go to the store when I can mix on site. Right. So I almost, as a matter of fact, on this job, because I've, I've had a lot of uh, paint handy in my studio, I've only been to the store one time. Ooh, okay. So it's a lot of recycled, good, not, not cheap paint, not junk paint. No. It's, this is stuff from other jobs that got recycled. This has got to last a whole bunch of years. Oh, yeah. So where is your studio located at? It's over in Carborough, sort of uh, technically in Chapel Hill, but... Uh, uh, over uh, west of Carborough. Okay. So I take the back road to the Chicken Bridge and get over here. To yeah, there's Bridge. there's bunches of ways to get from Chapel Hill to Pittsburgh without going down 15501. Oh, yeah. I gotta check this. One. So, all right, we're gonna let Mike go, folks. Here's a view of the mural. It's okay. Oh, he's okay. He was just checking on stuff. Oh, okay. And I cannot allow that. There we go. All right. Thank you so much, Michael.